Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Deadly explosion strikes Afghanistan's bulk province. ex khalistani leader exposes Pak's propaganda against India. And security forces bust terror hideout in Jammu and Kashmir. Let's begin the show with Afghanistan. Where the intensified efforts are fueling concern that the country might again become a hub of instability across South Asia and beyond. The war-torn country has been witnessing a spate of attacks in the past few months. Scores of Afghan civilians have been killed in bomb blasts, some of which have been claimed by the Islamic State. On March 12, a bomb blast occurred at the Tabian Farang Center in Mazari Sharif in northern Afghanistan. This incident comes just two days after a bomb blast in Mazari Sharif killed one of the highest-ranking Taliban officials and bulk governor, Mohammad Dawood Muzabil. A report. A deadly explosion ripped through the Taliban Farhang Center in Mazari Sharif in northern Afghanistan. The bomb blast occurred during the press award ceremony for journalists. At least eight people got injured, including five journalists three children and one guard lost his life. Islamic State terror group claimed responsibility for the attack. This incident comes just two days after a bomb blast in Mazari Sharif killed one of the highest ranking Taliban officials and bulk governor Mohammad Daud Muzammil. Muzammil was in his office when a suicide bomber detonated himself. The extremists have increased their attacks since the Taliban stormed back to power in 2021. The repeated bomb blasts exposed the hollow claims of the Taliban-led government about the improved security infrastructure in Afghanistan. Hundreds of common people have lost their lives in such deadly explosions carried out by armed groups linked to the Islamic State. Taliban has been a fighting force all along. And at this stage, they need to learn how to govern. And that has been their major challenge. Now, as we know, that there are large number of groups because Taliban is also not a homogeneous entity. And therefore, what we see is that there is there are many challenges that it is facing. It is still waiting for recognition from the world. It is also uh, hoping that it will continue to receive the funding that has been committed so that it can also provide relief to the people. But till then, the more and more people will get disenchanted and therefore in order to keep them under control it needs to refurbish its training programs, its forces and also to change them into a security force rather than an attacking force the way they have been working as a guerrilla warfare. ISIS terrorists in Afghanistan first came to global attention when it carried out a massive suicide bombing attack at one of the gates near Kabul airport, killing a large number of people. Since then, the group has carried out a string of attacks in different parts of the country. According to the Global Terrorism Index, Afghanistan remains the country most impacted by terrorism for the fourth consecutive year, despite attacks and deaths falling by 75% and 58% respectively. The violence has fueled fears that Afghanistan could collapse into anarchy and even return to a new phase of civil war. The Islamic State group's attacks, coupled with a spiraling economic crisis, have caused mounting concern over the future stability of the country. The Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is moving fast towards peace and prosperity. People are happy in the region, but someone is envious of this development. 
The someone is none other than India's hostile neighbor, Pakistan, which is consistently making efforts to hamper peace and accord in the region. However, the Indian security forces, despite suffering losses, managed to foil all its devious agendas. Recently, security forces busted an old terrorist hideout in Kupwara district and recovered several arms and ammunition. In the past couple of months, several attempts to carry out attacks against Indian security forces in Kashmir have been foiled. The credit of these foiled attacks goes to the alert security grid and it also points to a flourishing human intelligence network that is primarily responsible for such detections. However, in many of these attempts, security forces have recovered several arms and ammunition and improvised explosive devices which are a sign of something dangerous brewing in the dark underbelly of the valley. The latest recovery has been made in Jammu and Kashmir's Kupwara district, where the security forces recovered large cache of arms and explosives. Acting on a piece of specific information, Jammu and Kashmir police launched a cordon and search operation in the area, following which they busted an old terrorist hideout in the Shalnar Hagnikut area of Kupwara's Handwara. The security forces recovered a huge cache of arms and ammunition from the terrorist hideout, including a rifle, several hand grenades and rocket shells. Pakistan now, because it has like created that Frankenstein, it cannot stop it. What is happening is that today, the control of these terrorist cells, these terrorist organizations is only with ISI and that too only semi. It's not complete because now they are functioning autonomously also. What is happening is that Pakistan is facilitating the infiltration of these uh, terrorists from the international border as well as the line of control. Pakistan is not going to mend its ways. Frustrated with ongoing development and peace in Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan is using all tricks in its book to incite terrorism in the region. Although most of its moves have either failed or backfired. Vigilant and insecurity forces have throttled almost all of their ill designs in the past weeks. A significant number of terrorists have been eliminated while many others have been apprehended. According to Jammu and Kashmir police report, three districts in Kashmir, Bandipora, Kupwara and Ganderbal have zero active local terrorists currently, while prominent terror outfits Lashkar e Taiba and Jaish e Mohammed have gone headless after security forces neutralized their operatives and commanders in multiple operations and encounters. Also, the terror related violence in Jammu and Kashmir has come down to all time low in recent years. According to official statistics, the Union Territory has witnessed a remarkable decline in counter-insurgency operations and terrorism-related violence this year, with a low number of terrorist kills as compared with last year. According to data, seven terrorists have been killed this year by security forces till March 12, of whom three were foreigners, while in the same period last year, 31 terrorists were gunned down. Officials believe that terror recruitment is at its lowest in recent years, while infiltration from across the border has also gone down. This comes amid a massive crackdown on terrorism and terror infrastructure in Kashmir. Time period has shown that Indian security forces have now broken the back of all militancy that was, in Pakistan, that was sponsored by Pakistan in Kashmir Valley. And we have seen that since 90, when Operation Topak uh, was launched by General Ziaul Haq and then it carried on. The peak was reached somewhere between 90 and uh, 97, 98 and after that there has been a steady decline. But ever since Operation All Out was launched by the armed forces and the security forces over there, we have seen daily count of two to three terrorists and those terrorists who were supposed to be the leaders. Despite all the embarrassment and name-calling at various global forums, Pakistan continues to use terrorism as an instrument of its state policy. 
In a sophisticated world where the other countries are looking forward to establishing peace, harmony and developing new technologies for the advancement of the world's settlement, Pakistan's state policy of terrorism is causing violence and is creating an environment of distrust in the world. Residents settled near the border areas are living in constant fear due to the frequent firing along the border from Pakistani side. Pakistani army generals, who are the real masterminds behind most of the terrorism across the globe, believe that the world won't notice their devious plans. But to their surprise, not only all of their diabolic activities are being monitored, but being given a befitting reply by the Indian security forces. Pakistan yet again remained at the receiving end as India and other nations pulled out Pakistan for making references of Jammu and Kashmir at the 146th Inter-Parliamentary Unit Assembly in Bahrain. Also, a report released by the Ministry of External Affairs of India slammed Pakistan for perpetrating Mumbai terror attacks and breaching its January 2004 commitment of no cross-border terrorism against India. We have a report. Pakistan's obsession with Kashmir is as old as its creation. For Kashmir, Pakistan staked its sovereignty, its identity, its economy, and even the lives of its citizens. Over decades, mass hysteria was created, and every Pakistani was expected to forfeit his life, property, and the future of his children, all for that mad dream called Kashmir. Despite fighting three overt wars, and carrying out numerous covert operations, Islamabad has clearly failed in its objective to annex Jammu and Kashmir. With Pakistan failing to get traction for its belligerent stand on Kashmir, the successive governments in the country raised the issue at all the international forum, including at the UN General Assembly. Pakistan, the rogue nation, was yet again put to shame internationally after it made a reference to Kashmir at the 146th Inter-Parliamentary Unit Assembly in Bahrain. India in a strong rejoinder slammed Pakistan, terming it an exporter of terrorists and reiterated that Pakistan has no locus standi to comment on Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. That a country which is a known exporter of terrorists and responsible for inflicting countless cross-border terrorist activities and attacks in Jammu and Kashmir is claiming to champion the cause of human rights. In the end, I again reiterate on behalf of India that it is extremely unfortunate that Pakistan has again chosen to misuse this August platform by mentioning in their statement about Jammu and Kashmir, which is an integral part of India it was an integral part of India. It will always remain an integral part of India. No one could ever forget the fateful night of November 26, 2008, when the port city of Mumbai was rocked by multiple terrorist attacks. At least 166 people, including 20 security force personnel and 26 foreign nationals lost lives and over 300 people were injured. Pakistan, however, refuses to take responsibility of the heinous terrorist attack on India. The annual report of Ministry of External Affairs released a few days ago stated that Pakistan is yet to show sincerity in delivering justice to the families of the 2611 Mumbai terror attacks as it continued to engage in obfuscation and dilatory tactics. The report also highlights that India consistently raises the issue of Pakistan's continued support of cross-border terrorism and terrorist infiltration in bilateral, regional and multilateral fora and briefs partners and the international community at large on the continued concerns of cross-border terrorism emanating from Pakistan. The report slammed Pakistan for breaching its January 2004 commitment of not allowing its soil for terrorism in India. According to the report, Pakistan has not let up cross-border terrorism, infiltration and illegal smuggling of arms across the line of control 
an international boundary. That we should be able to firstly prevent it in entering India by good border fencing, good border defences as well as good intelligence, good surveillance and technologically empowering the border security forces. Pakistan has chosen to divert the attention of the international forums with its imposterous political propaganda full of disinformation and gratuitous references about India's internal matters today. It will be better for Pakistan to set its own house in order before it speaks about others. Human rights defenders in Pakistan are being silenced every day through intimidation, secret detention, torture and enforced disappearances with the direct involvement of the Pakistani government. Targeting of journalists through threats, assaults, arrests instilling extreme fear and self-censorship exposes the fallacy of Pakistan's so-called military-run democratic system. Therefore, Pakistan's principal stand on Kashmir, which envisaged a deceptive self-determination based on a selective recall of UN resolutions, has been nothing but political theatre and terrorist games. Pakistan is the main force nurturing the drive to create a so-called Khalistan or independent homeland for Sikhs and the extremists backed by Islamabad pose serious threats to India. Former Khalistan leader Jaswan Singh Thakedar has recently exposed ISI propaganda against India and said that Khalistan referendum is the Pakistan's intelligence agency's mindset. Take a look. Islamabad's role in supporting the Khalistan movement is a direct consequence of the 1971 breakup of Pakistan, when Bangladesh was formed out of East Pakistan with the help of Indian armed forces. Following 1971 war, the only thing Pakistan wanted was revenge and more specifically, bleeding India with a thousand cuts. Thus, post-1971, Pakistan's policy and strategical measures underwent transition and became entirely dedicated to hurt India along the religious, political and ethnic lines. In this way, the foundation of the Khalistan movement was laid. The ethnic cleansing, forced conversions, targeted attacks on Gurudwaras have reduced the Sikhs Hindus and the Christians into a small fraction of a community in Pakistan. Yet Pakistan assumes to be the champion of the Khalistani causes and support the Khalistan militancy. Jaswan Singh Thakedar, a former pro-Khalistan leader, has exposed the open secret that there are symbiotic arrangements between the Khalistan organization and Pakistan's deep state such as the ISI. Jaswan Singh characterizes the Khalistan reference being promoted in Western countries as the handiwork of Pakistan's ISI. He also clarified that these referenda attempts by pro-Khalistan organizations are an attempt to mislead people and have nothing to do with Sikhs in India. However, some Sikhs are acting as tools and actively being supported by Pakistan, India's arch rival and its deep state. देखो जी जी पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट है वो वो ये सोच दी है जो मेरे हिसाब ना भी सानू इंडिया ना हम लड़ाई करने की कोई लोड नहीं हैगी उना जे हाथ से एक एक टूल बन के काम कर रहे ने वो समझदे है भी जे इना ते फर्ज कीता एक लड़ाई लग दी है जे ते हजार करोड़ भी लग सकता हजारों बंदे मर जांदे है वो कहंदे एहो जा पंगा लेन दी की लोड है अहि क्यों ना छोटे-छोटे इना नु फीड करी जाइए पैसे दे जाइए ते उधे ना ये इंडियन गवर्नमेंट नू डिस्टर्ब करिए तो वो इस तरीके का ना कर रहे हैं। On the question of the Sikh community living in Canada, the UK or the USA, and their opinion on such a sinister and anti-India secessionist referendum, just one thing said: people living in Canada, the US or Britain don't have the right to vote for any kind of secessionist declaration. 
the pro Khalistan separatists settled abroad are making repeated attempts to grab the attention of the world Sikh community by indulging into violence. Indian diaspora have been continuously facing threats from such brainwashed Khalistani sympathizers who are being funded by ISI. UK is England is all right. Oh, now it's finished. Now five seven percent is done. A little bit is not going to be a big loss. So that loss is all people who are criminal people who are hired to do it. One person can do it. You can hire them. पर खालसा दी मोमेंट इंग्लैंड विच नहीं है गई। Various organizations in Punjab have already condemned the activities of pro-Khalistan outfits like Six for Justice and call for strict action against those propagating anti-India movement. Although a huge force and money is being pushed in to destroy the youth and hamper peace in India, assertive vigilance and several crackdowns leading to multiple arrests have been able to contain the anti-India activities happening at the commands of Islamabad. This is the country that has been made. तो इन हलौर वालों ही आना जी तुझे गाल की थी या इन नंकाना सावल होना इन पंजा सावल होना तो इन दिन मदद न करो इन दिन स्टेट ना बंद दो खालसा ला दुश्मन असली पाकिस्तान है ना के हिंदुस्तान The new generation in Punjab has totally rejected Pakistan's malicious propaganda and has opposed to any such move that divides people along lines of faith. Hence, Islamabad should now understand that it cannot achieve its goal of forming a separate Khalistan either through conventional war or through other conspiracies. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.